Hello everybody, my name is Matthias Ellerbeck, I'm a mobile radio trainer and today we will cover the topic Huawei BSC product version 6900. BSC means base station controller and describes a mobile network element that is used in second generation mobile networks, like GSM for example. In this case we are talking about the WCDMA version of this BSC 6900 and WCDMA means Wideband Code Division Multiple Access. This is the multiplex technique that is used in UMTS. UMTS belongs to the third generation mobile networks. In UMTS, the controller would usually be named RNC for radio network controller. But the Huawei BSC 6900 is able to serve either GSM or UMTS or both techniques, technologies. Here we are covering the V900 hardware version and the release 15 software version of the BSC 6900. In this course, we will cover the cabinet and the subrack structure of the BSC 6900. And in another one, we will cover the subsystems and boards and the cabling. So first of all, we will start with the cabinets, which are also called racks. And we can have one or two of these cabinets. We have two different versions of the cabinets. One is with one door, the other one is with two doors, but the dimensions stay the same. This means the one cabinet is always 2200 millimeters high, 600 millimeters wide and 800 millimeters deep for both versions. If we have only one cabinet, then this is always the main processing rack, abbreviated with MPR. If we need more capacity, we can have a second cabinet and the second one would then be called extended processing rack. Here we see a front view and a rear view of one cabinet and we see that we can mount up to three sub racks in one cabinet, which are here depicted with the small number three. We see also that at the front and the back there are boards mounted so this means that this is a double-sided version of one cabinet where we can mount boards from the front side and from the back side. Down here we have the air inlet and an independent fan. The independent fan together with the subrack fans maintains the cooling inside the system and on top of the rack we have the power distribution box. On the rear side we have some cabling devices, cabling trays and cabling trolls because all of the interface cabling is done on the back side. In terms of the subracks that are mounted in one rack, we see here that we have up to three subracks. We have always at least one subrack. We have the minimum configuration of one rack with one subrack, the subrack zero. Subrack zero is the main processing subrack and has, as we see here, some power consumption that varies between ATM and IP transmission. The extended processing subracks are all only needed if we need more capacity. And if we need even more capacity, we have another rack, this extended processing rack, with up to three more subracks, three, four, and five. And here we see that also for the extended processing subracks, we have some differences in the power consumption. In total, we have around five kilowatt power consumption per rack, if we have it fully mounted. So far, now we covered the cabinets and the subracks, and for this chapter, that's all. So I thank you for your attention.